Halfway through Oshkosh 2016, there are, I can't think of two more recognizable faces in aviation than John and Martha King. Yesterday morning, we discussed ACS. I've been getting a lot of feedback on it, and not a lot of it positive, right. especially from examiners and instructors who have been out there for a long time. You've got a decidedly different opinion than what I'm hearing. Fill me in. I do. Well, first of all, it's a change, and, and we've been doing it this way. We've always done it this way. It's hard to get people to change it, uh, but the Airman Certification Standards are designed to create a pilot who's risk-aware, a pilot who knows what is about to happen, uh, what the risks associated with it, and how they're going to mitigate those risks. We started off by wanting to change the knowledge test. The knowledge test used to ask questions that were trivial and obscure and tricky, so we came up with standards for the knowledge test and also for the practical test when you ask knowledge questions. And now we have to cover knowledge in a way that if the pilot didn't know it, it would be a risk factor. So we don't really care how many satellites are in the constellation of GPS. It's not going to make a pilot a better risk manager to know that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask questions that make a pilot a better risk manager. And at the same time, we're providing standards for risk management. And all of this is designed to make a pilot who's situationally aware. I think one of the important things to emphasize is that the tasks and the standards for the maneuvers on the uh, practical test have not changed one bit. They are exactly the same that they were before. What has been added into the mix is a more thoughtful discussion of possible hazards and risks and the thought process the pilot would go through in order to analyze those and to mitigate those. And part of what the ACS has done is something that for instance, the designees in the San Diego FISDO, because I've talked to them in meetings a lot, are really happy with is they pulled the special emphasis items, which had gotten to be a long list in the introduction of the practical test standards, out of there and integrated them into the flow of the uh, check ride so that they're you find them exactly where they ought to be discussed and where they're relevant to the issue instead of trying to remember, oh yeah, don't forget I need to discuss X from out of the introduction. Uh, much better flow and the DPEs in San Diego say the, the check ride time is the same, no change. So where do you think all this heartburn's coming from? Well, change. I mean, change is difficult. We've been doing it this way for a long period of time. There also, it's going to require all of those who prepare course materials and books and things like that to change our materials. And it's going to be a huge amount of work for all of us to do that. And if you don't think it's going to make a difference, why go to all this work? But I think it will make a huge difference. I think it's worth it to make the change. And there are people who complain that the Airman Certification Standards are subjective. Well, they're really not. The whole idea about the Airman and certification centers is to provide guidance, it's to provide standards for risk management. So we're trying to make it less subjective and that's the whole idea. But just the very idea that you're asking a pilot to know what's going on, determine the risks about what's going on, and come up with a mitigation program for them, it's a new thing. And it's, but it's not subjective any more than soft field landings are subjective. You know, any uh, really good flight instructor and really good DPE has always used scenario-based training and has evaluated the pilot's ability to manage risk, but they've never had any FAA guidance on exactly how to do that, and they haven't had a case for the DPE that can say, uh, this person just has no clue about potential risks and situational awareness, and that in and of itself is enough to have them not pass the check right. But believe me, any DPE who found an applicant to be totally clueless on situational awareness always found some way to down that pilot because they wouldn't be safe. One thing to me that's important to say is this iteration won't be perfect. This is 1.0 on the ACS. It will take time for the industry and the FAA to figure out the best way to talk about it, the best vocabulary, best way to teach it, best way to evaluate it. We think a really excellent start's been made but we know it's not perfect and we know it will improve going forward. And some of the critics 
are applying the old vocabulary to a new system and they're saying it won't work. And we, we have to get this vocabulary down. And a lot of things the FAA did, they, they implied pilots couldn't make a decision, pilots didn't have judgment, pilots had hazardous attitudes. All of those things I think have been counterproductive and I think we can do much better. We can say there are special risks associated with aviation, you need to learn how to identify and manage those risks. I think that's acceptable to the listener. The other terms haven't been. Aero TV is brought to you by... Are you stall smart? Ever since Orville and Wilbur took to the skies, pilots have been taught that the more airspeed you have, the better off you are. But over the last 100 plus years, we've learned that's not always the case. Take stalls, for example. The common belief is that if you have sufficient airspeed, the aircraft won't stall. The fact is, an airfoil always stalls at the same critical angle of attack in relation to the relative airflow, regardless of airspeed, configuration, or weight. Learn more at AspenAvionics.com.